Good morning, this is Dr. Rutledge and I've got a presentation that I think you'll find interesting this morning. And I start off with a warning. This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment and does not constitute medical or other professional advice. This is just me reporting back from some recent exciting new news in the area of research. Don't listen to me on this talk you need to talk to your doctor and your bariatric surgeon. On the other hand, I think it's worth talking to them because there's new research and these are my opinions and they're not intended for you to go out and start doing these things because you might die or get complications. And by watching this, it doesn't mean that I'm your doctor. Although if you want, you could contact me and maybe arrange that. <laughs> but this is, doesn't do it. Okay. <clears throat> Dr. Rutley says that all the bariatric surgeons in the world are wrong again. This is slightly tongue in cheek, but uh, right now around the world, uh, you're probably aware that bariatric surgeons have a focus as do many physicians on high protein. And this presentation says no more high protein diets, eat less protein if you want to live. No, this is for entertainment purposes only. Every slide, entertainment purposes only. Don't start doing this at home, you might die. Don't do this. Okay, so I'm basing this presentation on the very famous scene from the Terminator. Come with me if you want to live. Terminator 2. So come along and see what this story has to show us. Okay, this is basically a recapitulation of another presentation by another good scientist or a good scientist. The 18th International Congress of the German Medical Association for Fasting and Nutrition and the presenter whose slides I've copied here just for presentation is a, a professor uh, at Harvard by the name of James Mitchell. Now he has a tragic story because according to this presentation, not long after he gave this presentation last year, he passed away from an accident. So our uh, compassion goes out to the friends and family um, but I think he left behind something very exciting in this presentation. Basically, his title was Protein Restriction Improves Glucose and Lipid Homeostasis Independent of Total Calorie Intake, and we'll talk about that. And this was from this conference where he was an invited presenter. And this is a bit of what was said and says, Professor James Mitchell, Associate Professor of Genetics and Complex Disease, Harvard School of Public Health, and this dear friend passed away tragically in an accident on November 2020. And his uh, video, if you want to see the real science behind this and not some silly bariatric surgeon, me, talk about his scientific findings. This is the link. This is his title slide, Professor Mitchell. And he talks about the critical problem that we have in the world today, which is rapidly aging population. And this leads to diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, heart attack, stroke, etc. And trying to attack any one of these will be a problem because if the population continues to age, what he pointed out is one of these other diseases will get you if you could stop one of them because the others are coming all from aging. The aging population, if you were to cure diabetes, the death rate would be decreased only slightly because probably the patient might die of cancer, Alzheimer's or heart disease. So he began his presentation talking about calorie restriction. And this is really simple. If you eat less, you live longer. So let me say that a couple of times. If you eat less, you live longer. If you eat less, you'll be thinner, you'll be healthier, you'll have fewer cancer, heart attack and stroke. If you eat less, you live longer. And they did some studies in the past Oh, so, <laughs> sorry, we're eating too much. Okay, hello. <laughs> I hope this isn't a surprise. So what people have done is they take mice and they feed them less. And the less you eat as a mouse, the longer you live. And so if you look at say 30 months, they get close to doubling the lifespan, not quite, but close to doubling the lifespan when they go from regular eat all you want to 25% almost half as much, or even only eating a third as much, the animals live much longer, up to a point where it gets to be too much. And then the eating only a third of your normal intake is uh, 
adds very little to lifespan, but clearly eat less, live longer. Okay. Also, in addition to living longer, there is a lower fasting glucose, that means less diabetes, lower or improved insulin sensitivity, reduced fat in the bloodstream like triglycerides, reduced obesity, reduced blood pressure, and there's a reduced onset of cardiovascular disease, neurodegeneration, and cancer. So for all those things, eat less, live better. And this has also been studied in all kinds of animals up to including humans. And he presented one study in humans. And basically this is a multi-center trial and basically cholesterol went down, which is predictive of life and death, heart attack, stroke, et cetera, no matter what the silly keto people say, decreases triglycerides, which also predict death, decreases the insulin, and decreases blood pressure, which is one of the best indicators of bad outcomes in human beings. All these things occurred in people who ate less. They tried to get them to eat 25% less, they only got 15%, but even with that, all these indicators of life and death improved. Okay, so now what he says is, yeah, okay, I get it. You could eat less, but it turns out it's pretty hard. I mean, all of you could probably stop watching now if you knew you could eat less and we're able to do it, 30% calorie restriction, you'd be fine. What he's talking about today, what I'm talking about is that this confusion of high protein is actually backwards. Because in his studies, he gave animals zero protein, they could eat as much as they want and they ate a lot more and they were happier, but the results were equally good. In other words, instead of eating only a third as much or eating a third less food or two thirds of what you used to eat. You could eat all you want and more, just eat less protein. Now he used 0% for some of his studies, but you don't have to do that. Just cutting back will show you can make you healthier. That's what we wanna talk about today. And in my opinion, your doctor and other people on the internet who tell you to eat high protein are killing you, I think. so. Talk to your doctor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Okay, so here's what he said. Look, you could eat as much, much as you want or you could go on calorie restriction. That would mean you have 30% less. This would be about how much you could eat out on a plateful. Or you could eat much less protein and have a whole bunch to eat. So let me see if I can explain that in this coming. So if you just cut the protein and let the mouse eat everything that they want, they can eat as much as they want, but there's less protein in the food, right? In the rat chow. When they did that, the rats live longer. Okay, from 800 to 1200. So that's 400 extra days, almost an extra quarter of life. And they could eat as much as they want. They could eat as much as they want. They can eat as much as they want. They just ate low protein. No, not protein powders. No, not protein bars. Interested? Okay, then they said, well, what's the exact right amount? I mean, how much protein less? Well, what they found is the lower the protein and the higher the carbs in, both, in all kinds of animals, the more the lifespan increased. Now, there's carbs and there's carbs, and plus they tested it in fat and fat didn't help. But eating more carbs along with the low protein made the animals live longer. Now, there's carbs and there's carbs. So there's junk like candy bars and junk food like that, or Pop-Tarts or other things, Coca-Cola, that's lots of carbs. That's not what they're talking about. They're talking about healthy foods, which have a lot of carbs in it, and that plus low protein let people and animals live longer. No, no smoothies, no protein drinks, no protein powder. Protein restriction saves lives. Protein restriction improves survival after surgery and trauma. What? They did a study where they took away the blood supply for the kidneys of little mice. Okay, they clamped off the blood supply to the kidneys. When that happens, they get kidney failure. The little mouse gets kidney failure. And if they were eating prior to this surgery, if they were eating prior to this surgery and had this happen, they closed off the blood supply. The several days later, almost all had died. 
okay? If they fasted them for a day, lots of them lived. After two or three days, they got 100% survival, but that's fasting. And fasting, I think, is pretty hard. Most people find it difficult to do, even a one-day fast. But if they gave them two weeks of decreased dietary restriction, they got them to survive. So just eat less for two weeks and then they can be resilient. They can live through this trauma. Then they tried it with protein restriction. In other words, you can eat as much as you want, okay? As much as you want, right? And what happened is, of course, they had a higher death rate, lower survival. But if they gave them no protein, for one week prior to the stress, one week prior to surgery, they just had no protein. Many of them, almost all of them survived, but even better was if they gave them few or no methionine. Methionine, we're gonna talk about, it's an amino acid that's in protein, particular meat protein. So all you gotta do then is not eat meat protein and dairy and eggs and you can survive a major surgery and trauma that would have killed a quarter to a third of everybody else. You become super person because you are more resistant to trauma if you have zero protein or just specialized protein that doesn't have the methionine, leucine in it that meat, dairy, and eggs have. So here's what they found, ischemia reperfusion injury. That's what they did. They clamped off this and what happened? Fasting for three days, calorie restriction, calorie restriction for one to four weeks or protein restriction or amino acid. All of them showed that they could improve survival. Okay. Okay, now they also looked at other measures. They said, let's just take, uh, not, not traumatize the poor little mice. Let's just say, let's have, um, protein restriction for a week. Okay, what happened is their, drop, their weight dropped a little bit, but also their fasting glucose got better. So in other words, they became non-diabetic. Their blood glucose got better and their triglycerides, the fat in the bloodstream melted away. They took obese mice and they lost a lot of weight. In other words, you can eat all you want, eat all you want, eat high carbs, low protein, and what happened is blood glucose got better and serum triglycerides went away for an obese mouse. Lose weight, eat all you want, but just low protein. In this case, they had zero protein, but they have other studies. And your diabetes gets better, your fat in your bloodstream, cholesterol, that's heart attack, stroke, and death. All these things are made better and you lose weight eating all you want. Okay, so here's what they, this is his summary. We know calorie restriction extends lifespan and health span and forestalls the onset of aging related diseases in multiple species. Calorie restriction works to increase stress resistance also. So in face of surgical stress like trauma and uh, surgery, but protein restriction can mimic each of these effects without a reduction in caloric intake. So you can eat as much as you want just eat low protein, less protein, eat more food and less protein and lose weight and be better. Okay, now is this too good to be true? Seems pretty good. Let's see what he did to try and prove it. So he took mice through a variety of studies and what he showed is that when you cut back on the protein, 0% protein, the fat begins to break down. In other words, the, the body recognizes it's getting no protein. So it doesn't want to use protein for purposes of energy. So it burns fat. That's why they'll get the weight loss. In addition, it takes up fat out of the bloodstream. So that's the VL or triglycerides. And all of these things reduce glucose production because they don't want to burn amino acids. And they spare the remaining protein in the body because it recognizes you're not getting protein. So if you don't eat protein, you can eat as much as you want, the body is gonna burn fat, get rid of fat in the bloodstream and make you healthier. Better able to resist stress and injury. 
Okay, now these are two more studies. In, in people, 12 healthy diabetics, zero protein diet for 10 days, they found that protein restriction reduces glucose in the blood, that is the diabetes got better and reduces the glucose need for insulin. So the diabetes got better. In this study below in 2018, protein restriction for four to six weeks, they went to seven to 9% protein before prostatectomy versus control. It reduced triglyceride and increased the response to clear fat from the bloodstream. That is, they were made better from their disease in preparation for prostatectomy. Now he also points out that this has already been shown. In other words, we've already figured this out. There was something called the rice diet by a guy named Walter Kempner back in the 40s. He ran his own clinic unit and patients were on the ward. They had 2000 calories a day and only 5% protein. And it was effective against hypertension, obesity and cardiovascular disease in hundreds of subjects. But such a very difficult diet wasn't easily done. So this uh, physician, this uh, doctor decided to do some further study. This was difficult, but it shows that if you give a low protein diet and high carbs, you can get massive weight loss, cure hypertension, obesity, and coronary vascular disease. So this uh, professor then studied the, what people eat now. And what they found is that omnivores, that people who eat meat and animal protein, usually have about 15% of their calories as protein that if you're a vegetarian, you have more like 12% and then vegans eat about 10%. So that means they're over here. And so vegans are in this sweet spot where they would have less obesity, less heart attack, stroke, death, and less Alzheimer's disease and dementia. And in fact, that's what we find. And it may be, it's just less protein, eat less protein. So here it is. This is the USDA uh, uh, guidelines and the USDA guidelines say you should eat anywhere from 10%. They say up to 35%, but the new research would suggest to me it ought to be down here. But omnivores are in the 15% range. Lacto-ovo vegetarians are here and vegans are at this sweet spot of 10% where many things start to happen. Now, when they looked at the amino acids in the vegans and the plant eating patients, what they found were some differences. And we're gonna look at this methionine, leucine and isoleucine are the amino acids different in the two groups, okay? These differences are life and death. So high methionine and branched chain amino acids have been shown to be predictors of uh, obesity, stroke, heart attack and death. And here they are, so the animal product eaters and isoleucine, leucine, and meat are all elevated in animal, animal food eaters. And valine also is another branch chain amino acid. You can see it's different here. And also methionine, which is a precursor to what's called homocysteine. And this is also a predictor of cardiovascular disease, et cetera. And so this is again, meat eaters, more methionine, and that's more branched chain amino acids also, that's bad for your health. But if you eat a lower diet, a diet lower in protein, one week on the diet, the less protein, the bigger the change in weight, the bigger the change in glucose, and the bigger the change in serum insulin. So you would like to lose weight, less protein, more, the, a greater decline in protein, more weight loss. Cure your diabetes, less protein. Decrease the need for insulin, less protein. And again, the sweet spot seems to be between six and 10%, and that way you can live without getting in trouble. This is another analysis, and basically they gave the lower amounts of protein in this group. And when they did that, they looked at liver changes and liver uh, transcription changes in the genes. And what happens is there's a sweet spot right here between six and 10%. And remember, this is vegans here at 10%. Want to be healthy, want to lose weight? Then you should be at that sweet spot there between six and 10% of protein. That's low protein. And it makes a big difference in the unpublished studies. The other thing is, this is something called AMPK. This gene gets turned on 
when you have a low protein diet. That gene in particular is one that burns fat. In other words, you turn that on, animals and people burn fat. When you have a low protein diet, your body burns fat. It doesn't want to burn protein, so it burns fat. You can eat all you want and you turn on AMPK, it burns fat. You know what most of my patients would like? To burn fat. You know how you can do that? Eat less protein. You don't have to do anything dangerous, just eat like a vegan. Eat most fresh fruits and vegetables. It's not hard, it's simple. Okay, here's the question he finished up with. Are we eating enough protein or too much? My opinion, reading this research, ask your doctor, don't go on mine. This is only for entertainment purposes only. I think we're eating too much. I think you are eating too much. I think if we ate less, like a vegan type diet, we would be better. And people selling you on high protein, I think are wrong. So I think America and the world are being poisoned with increased obesity, illness, and death. The standard American type diet, you know, junk food, high fat, high salt, high meat, eggs, and dairy are poisoning us. It is an epidemic equal in its deadly effect to the present epidemic of the COVID virus. Eating less calories, eating less protein, or eating less methionine and branched chain amino acids improves our outcomes, that is weight loss, health, and wellness. This can easily be done by eating less meat, dairy, and eggs, and more fresh fruits and vegetables. It's not rocket science. It's really easy. Now we have the science to support it, in my opinion. Entertainment purposes only. Talk to your doctor. So I think all the bariatric surgeons in the world who are recommending these high protein diets are wrong again. Remember, they said the MGB was a bad operation. They were wrong. I was right. No more high protein diets. I would recommend you consider talking with your doctor. Eat less protein if you want to live. No, entertainment purposes only. And I quote then the Terminator, come with me if you want to live. I hope you like this talk and uh, let me know in the comments below. Wait, live long and prosper. <laughs>